this is not exactly a subtopic. This is basically like we are, you know, talking about the limitations of the FDA, limitations of the fundamental theorem of algebra, not arithmetic. Just now we saw the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now here we are listing out the drawbacks or the limitations of the fundamental theorem of uh, algebra. Number one, FTA does not say whether the zeros are distinct or repeating. Is that clear? FTA does not, FTA does not say anything about if the zeros are identical or distinct. You understood the meaning of this. You see, all that it states, the fundamental theorem of algebra, all that it states is that if the degree is n, there are n number of zeros. But they don't say anything about whether those zeros are distinct or identical. For example, listen, what is the degree here? 3. What are the number of zeros here? 3. But all those three numbers are different, no? Minus 1, 2 and 3. Distinct, right? Now, what is this one? This is also very much like this, no? Even this polynomial is very much like this. They both are of the same kind. This is also cubic. Even this is cubic. How many zeros are there according to FTA? There are three zeros. And what are they here? One, one and one. So here, the zeros are what? Distinct. And here the zeros are, in the other case, the zeros are what? Identical. You know the meaning of identical, right? Okay, they both are of the same category. This is also a cubic polynomial. This is also a cubic polynomial. Okay, according to FTA, this is also having three zeros. This is also having three zeros. But here, all the three zeros are distinct. So in reality, we have three numbers, whereas here all the three zeros are identical. And you may even have mixture of these two also. Mixture of these two means what? What do they mean by mixture of these two? You may have something like one, one and two. Some of the zeros are repeating and some are distinct. All of you, did you get this first point? Okay. So FTS says, how many zeros are there? For example, if you have a polynomial of degree 10, how many zeros are there according to FTA? There are 10 zeros. If there is a polynomial of degree 10, according to FTA, there are 10 zeros. But the problem is, you don't know if all those 10 numbers are different numbers. You have no idea if those 10 numbers are different numbers or they are same. We have no idea. Are they like this? Or they are like this 2, 2, 2, 2, 10 times. And even it can be mixture of both. Mixture of both means what? Some of them are repeating, some of them are distinct. Something like, you know, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3. Are you getting my point? 4. Is this clear? Some of them are distinct, some of them are identical. Is this point clear? So that is the first drawback of FTA, right? We do not know how many distinct zeros are there, right? Okay. Second drawback is, FTA does not say anything about the types of zeros. Yeah. Real or non-real or positive or negative or rational or irrational. Okay. It doesn't say anything. It absolutely doesn't say anything about uh, what, what are those types of zeros. Okay. FTA does not say anything about the types of zeros of a given polynomial. I'll just uh, th think about this question. Think about this. x square plus 1. What kind of polynomial is this? Yeah, it's a quadratic polynomial. Can you give me a 0 of this? Minus 1. Okay, think about it. I'm replacing x with minus 1. I'm replacing x with minus 1 according to your suggestion. Okay, what is square of minus 1? Square of minus 1 is 1 plus 1 is 2. No, it is not giving me you give me a zero of this. You give me any real number which is going to satisfy this. It is going to make this zero. No matter how much you think, you will never be able to come up with any real number which is going to make this zero. You know why? What can you say about square of any real number? X is real number, let us say. What can you say about square of... Yeah, square of any real number will be, don't say positive, call it non-negative. There is a difference between positive and non-negative. What is the meaning of positive, you know? Positive means what? Strictly greater than zero. That's the meaning of positive. Non-negative means what? Exactly. So square of any real number is non-negative. Don't say positive. Square of any real number is what? Non-negative. 
do you get the square of any real number is non negative so this is non negative no matter what you replace x with this is non negative but after that you are adding 1 to it right now it is going to become what positive this can possibly be 0 i admit x square can possibly be 0 but after adding 1 to it can it be equal to 0 no it is going to be strictly greater than 0 so this is always positive so you cannot replace x with any real number for which this is going to be equal to 0. Now you know what is the conclusion? Is there any zeros here for this quadratic polynomial? Is there any zero for this quadratic polynomial? You cannot say no because there is some other problem. The problem is FTA guarantees the fundamental theorem of algebra guarantees that if the polynomial is having degree n, there are n number of zeros. That is of polynomial of degree 2, right? So there must be two zeros. But we're not getting even one zero out of the two. And clearly we don't see any real number zero. The reason is there exist numbers beyond real number system that I told you even in our previous uh, chapter. Do you remember? I gave you those various number systems. Do you remember I gave you various number systems? Yeah. So the biggest number system that we are studying is real number system, but there are number systems which are beyond real number system. I told you it's called as complex number system. There you can find solution for this. In the real number system, we, we don't have any solution for this. Okay. So in the number system that we are working with, the only number system that we know, there exists no solution. Is that point clear? So FTA doesn't say anything about the type of zeros. Okay, even it can be a non-real number and you have no idea about non-real numbers. Okay, so if I give you a, uh, you know, a quartic polynomial, a polynomial of degree 4, you may be thinking, okay, there are four zeros. Yeah, there are four zeros. You don't have to think. There are certainly four zeros, but you may be wrongly thinking that those four numbers are real numbers. But in reality, those numbers are not even real numbers. And you do not know anything outside of real number system. So from your perspective, there are no zeros. Is the logic clear? Okay, so that is another drawback of uh, FTA. There is one more drawback of FTA. It is FTA, the fundamental theorem of algebra does not show us a method to find zeros. Even in these examples, what did I do here? I myself gave you the zeros. Okay, for this polynomial, uh, quadratic polynomial, these two are the zeros. Then I gave you justification why they are zeros. I only gave you justification why they are zeros. I did not derive it. You see, justifying is nothing okay, that anybody can do. Can you derive these zeros that we did not, I did not show you. Okay. And the fundamental theorem of algebra never tells you about how to find the zeros. Okay. Look at this. I told you this is a cubic polynomial whose zeros are these three numbers. And we verified it. This is another cubic polynomial whose uh, zeros are these three numbers. And then we verified it. We did not derive it. There is a big difference between verifying and deriving. Is the logic clear? There is a huge difference between verifying and deriving. So imagine I give you this polynomial. I give you this polynomial and I want you to find the zeros. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep on putting some values for x? You will put x equals 1. No, it doesn't work. Put x equals 2. It doesn't work. Put x equals 3. It doesn't work. Are you going to keep on doing this forever? And who said that you have to work with only integers? Maybe 1.001 is a zero of this possible right okay root of 31 is a zero of this is it possible or not right in theory it's possible right okay so are you going to keep on verifying numbers one by one that is not that is definitely not the way to go about it okay so we need a proper a systematic way a method to find zeros of a polynomial that fta is not giving us there are some other ways of finding the zeros of only one specific type of polynomial Okay, but FTA doesn't say anything about it. Okay, how to find the zeros? It doesn't say. FTA only talks about the number of zeros. There it ends. FTA only talks about number of zeros. Okay, so FTA doesn't say whether those zeros are identical or, or distinct. It doesn't say anything about what kind of zeros they are. And it doesn't show us a method. It doesn't show us a method to find the zeros. Nothing is there. Okay, it just tells you how many zeros are there. That's it. Okay, now... Did you understand the limitation of the FTA? All of you? Very good. Now we are quickly recalling remainder theorem. 
it's a proper class 9 topic right but it's very very important like i told you so we are going to quickly recall this okay we are going to recall remainder theorem okay we're not discussing proof or anything i'll just give you the statement of the theorem and we will understand that statement using the uh, following example okay so it goes like this the remainder when the polynomial p of x is divided by x minus a what is x minus a that is also a polynomial right x minus a is also a polynomial what kind of polynomial it is linear polynomial so the remainder when the polynomial p of x is divided by x minus a is p of a okay what is even the meaning of it we'll understand this using the following example find the remainder when this polynomial what is this polynomial it's a fourth degree polynomial okay or quartic polynomial 4x power 4 minus 8x cubed plus 7x square plus 6x minus 37 we are dividing this polynomial by x minus 2 then what will be the remainder okay listen i will show you both the ways i will show you without using the remainder theorem only then you will know the pain of uh, you know not having remainder theorem only then you will know the worth of remainder theorem okay to what extent it simplifies our work only then you will understand it okay so i'll show you the normal way of doing it without using the remainder theorem which goes like this so first i'll divide this 4x power 4 minus 8x cube plus 7x square plus 6x minus 37 we are dividing it by what x minus 2 long division method long division method it's exactly the same way we used to divide two numbers two integers positive integers right long division method now i want 4x power 4 here you see we are going to actively try to reduce the degree of the polynomial i want to get rid of the biggest power that is x power 4 then i would like to get rid of x cube then i want to kill x square then i want to kill x so on okay so we want to keep reducing the degree one number at a time okay so yeah tell me i want to get 4x power 4 here what am i supposed to put here so that this into this is going to give you 4x power 4 4x cube put 4x cube the logic is x into 4x cube is how much x into 4x cube is how much 4x power 4 right it becomes 4x power 4 is that clear so what will happen and of course yeah one more term is there what is it minus 2 into 4x cube is minus 8x cube okay yeah both the things are cancelling it's a very very nice thing then okay both are cancelling you will have to bring this thing down you will have to bring this thing down when you bring it down what do you get 7 x cube plus sorry 7 x square okay 7 x square plus 6 x minus 37 yeah again i want 7 x square here what am i supposed to introduce here if i want 7 x square here what am i supposed to introduce here 7 x make sense you will have to introduce 7 x y x into 7 x is going to give you 7 x square is that clear x into 7x is going to give you 7x square okay so what do you get then minus 2 into 7x is going to give you minus 14x yeah now once again if you subtract what do you get 7x square 7x square will be gone 6x minus minus 14x is how much 20x and bring this uh, minus 37 down bring this minus 37 down what do you get 20x minus 37 okay now i want 20 20x over here I want 20x over here. What are we supposed to put over here then? 20. Because x into 20 is going to give you 20x. And minus 2 into 20 is going to give you minus 40. Okay, once again subtract, what do you get? 20x will be gone. Like I told you, every single step we are actively, like you know, cutting down the biggest power, right? So what is minus 37 minus of minus 40? What is minus 37 minus of minus 40? it's 3 okay it is 40 minus 37 that is 3 so this is the remainder x minus 2 is the divisor 4x cube plus 7x plus 20 is the what quotient 4x power 4 minus 8x cube plus 7x square plus 6x minus 37 is the dividend exactly like numbers right this is what what is this euclid's division lemma do you remember do you remember Euclid's division lemma? 
dividend dividend is equal to tell me what dividend exactly dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus plus what remainder okay plus remainder okay so dividend is over here this is the dividend right and divisor is what this one x minus 2 and quotient is what the blue one okay and the remainder is what three and when it comes to numbers we used to say that the remainder must be smaller than the divisor we used to say when it comes to numbers and here when it comes to polynomials what are we supposed to say when it comes to polynomials what are we supposed to say we say degree of remainder degree of degree of remainder is smaller than degree of divisor that much we say nothing more okay degree of remainder we say only that much degree of remainder i'll write in short is that okay with you is strictly less than degree of divisor degree of remainder is nothing uh, it's less than degree of divisor so this is literally the equivalent of what euclid's division lemma did you hear me this is literally the equivalent of euclid's division lemma did you get this all of you yeah okay so you should remember this also as a standard result right okay now one thing you can definitely agree with me that it's a lot of work it's very lengthy this is very lengthy now what if i try to solve the same problem using the remainder theorem what if you try to solve the same problem using the remainder theorem what do we get check this same problem but using remainder theorem now let us use remainder theorem remainder theorem now let us use remainder theorem what is the remainder when you try to divide uh, this polynomial p of x by x minus 2 what should be the remainder according to the statement it is p of 2 the remainder is what p of 2 what is p of 2 what is p of 2 you, you replace x with 2 wherever there is x replace it with 2 4 times 2 power 4 is 16 4 times 16 is what 64 minus 8 times what is 2 cube 8 that is also 64 8 times 8 is uh, 64 plus 7 times 2 square is 28 7 times 4 is 28 plus 6 times 2 is 12 minus 37 so what happens over here 64 minus 64 cancels what is 28 plus 12 40 40 minus 37 is how much 40 minus 37 is 3 same remainder which is simpler which is simpler of course the remainder theorem is far simpler yes or no so we don't have to do all this work right we just don't have to do all this work it's much much simpler similarly we are going to quickly recall factor theorem and factor theorem is only a special case of remainder theorem remember factor theorem is only a special case of remainder theorem we're going to quickly recall factor theorem okay the statement goes like this Alpha is a zero of the polynomial P of X if and only if, if and only if X minus alpha is a factor of P of X. The number alpha is a zero of the polynomial P of X if and only if X minus alpha is a factor of the polynomial P of X. Did you understand this? I'll explain, I'll give you an example. Okay. Okay, why to create new examples? I'll give you examples that are already used. Mm -hmm. Okay, you look at the first example. 4 is a 0 of this polynomial. 4 minus 3 is also 0, but I'm just talking about one number at a time. So 4 is a 0 of this polynomial. Okay, 4 is a 0 of the polynomial x square minus x plus minus 12. Okay, 4 is a 0 of the polynomial, x square minus x minus 12. Then, 
x minus 4 is a factor. You can verify this. x minus 4 is a factor of p of x. You can verify this. You know how to divide, right? So you can verify this using long division. If you want, you can verify this. Sorry, p of x I meant. So 4 is a 0 of this polynomial that we know. 4 is a 0 of this polynomial. Then it is guaranteed that x minus 4 is a factor of the same polynomial. Okay. And even the other way around is true. Even the other way around is true. Okay. Since x minus 3 is a factor of this polynomial, if you have any doubt, you verify. Okay. You try dividing this cubic polynomial by x minus 3, it will properly divide. If you have any doubt, you try verifying it. Okay. This cubic polynomial can be properly divided by x minus 3. So since x minus 3 is a factor of this polynomial, it implies, what does it imply? 3 is a 0 of p of x. Sorry, q of x. p is a 0 of q of x. Okay, now what is a proof? Okay, we're not like, you know, very systematically proving things, but I told you factor theorem is only a special case of remainder theorem. Okay, so based on remainder theorem, we can instantly prove it. You see, the logic is something very simple. When can you say x minus alpha is a factor of a polynomial? When can you say x minus alpha is a factor of this polynomial? When can you say something is a factor of something? The remainder must be? When can you? Yeah, the remainder must be zero. Only then. Then and only then you can say that it's a proper factor. So you can say x minus alpha is a factor of p of x. If and only if what? The remainder is zero. Right? But according to remainder theorem, what is the remainder? According to remainder theorem, what is the remainder? P of A is the remainder. Okay, here instead of A, we are using the letter what? We are using the letter alpha. Yes or no, that's the only difference. Okay, so what is the remainder when you divide x minus alpha? Okay, when you are using x minus alpha to, to, to divide P of x, what is the remainder? P of alpha. Okay, and only if that P of alpha is actually equal to 0, it will be a factor. And if p of alpha is equal to 0, then alpha is a 0 of the polynomial. Are you getting this? Because the remainder theorem tells you that, okay, if you are trying to divide a polynomial by x minus alpha, the remainder is going to be what? Remainder is going to be, I'm scribbling. No, no, no. Remainder theorem states that the remainder is going to be p of alpha. The remainder is going to be p of alpha. That is what it states. Remainder theorem states that the remainder is going to be p of alpha. But if you call it a factor, it means the remainder must be zero. So P of alpha must be zero. P of alpha is zero means alpha is a zero of the polynomial. Makes sense. Perfect. So that's it. Okay. This is a simply a special case of remainder theorem. And you have these two examples. Okay. So four is a zero of this polynomial. And you can test it out that X minus four is going to properly divide this polynomial. It's going to be a factor of this polynomial. And even the other way around, we can say, for example, if X minus three, is a factor of this polynomial, then 3 is a 0 of this polynomial. Both forward and backward implications are true. Did you get this?